we start, I would like you to do a couple of things. First of all, if you like these videos, please hit the like button. And also, if you want to see future videos, please hit subscribe and hit the notification bell. This way, you'll be informed of future videos as soon as they're published and you'll never miss a video. All right, so let's get to it. So the first thing that people think of with Amateur Radio Awards is DXCC. And DXCC stands for DX Century Club. And it is exactly what it sounds like. You make contact, you work 100 countries. You also have to confirm them. You have to provide written proof that you made these contacts. Usually written proof is in the form of a QSL card. And I'll show you exactly what one looks like. This is my QSL card, upside down. <laughs> and um, you can see here in the front, it has a picture of me and my shack. And in the back, it has information about um, the contact we made. Of course, it's all blank. You'll see things in here like the date, the time, the band, um, signal report, and also what mode we use. This is important because operating awards often have additional what you call endorsements for each of these different things. So how did the DXCC program get started? Well, initially when radio amateurs were discovered that radio could reach long distances and travel across the world and the you know they were regularly making contact from the united states and north america to europe and to south america and to africa and even as far away as australia new zealand asia russia and all these countries there was a, a real desire to determine how many countries one had contacted and a gentleman at the AWRL by the name of Clinton DeSoto, he was the original, uh, how should I put it, architect of the D DXCC program, where he came up with a system to determine how many countries one had worked. So you could just as easily say, well, you know, um, you could go by countries that have um, nation states and such like that but would you count Hawaii same as you would count the continental United States let's say California or even New York would you count uh, somewhere as far away as Pitcairn Island the same as um, you know um, one of its small islands near to it no you won't so they had to come up with a way to establish rules that would determine which of these countries, so to speak, um, would count. And then they came up with the idea of the DXCC entities. So if you look at the DXCC list, which is available at the website below, you will see that the, the, the list of countries or entities really isn't, you know, aligned with political boundaries. Like I mentioned, you have the example of Hawaii, you have Alaska, which are separate entities from the United States. A question I get commonly asked is, you know, if I contact these, is it the same as contacting the United States? The answer is no. Um, they're separate. And what about, um, you know, territories of the United States like Puerto Rico? They're separate too. What about the United Nations? And you know I've been to the United Nations and operated as 4U1UN a few months ago. They're a separate entity too because they're politically a separate entity. The Vatican is a separate entity. The sovereign um, military order of Malta is a separate entity. So all of these are counted through very specific rules. And you would find that there's a lot of deliberation within the ARL and um, about these rules. Now, mind you, that is the DXCC list. Of course, other award schemes have different lists and we'll get into that afterward. So that is DXCC. So you can get a basic DXCC certificate. And the basic DXCC certificate is a mixed certificate with 100 countries confirmed, meaning that you have cards or other confirmation 
um, which we'll get into just now. And you've submitted these to the AARL Awards Department and they have certified that you have made contact with these countries, these entities. And uh, you get a nice certificate on the, that you can frame and put on a wall. And uh, you know what? You might think it ends there, but no, it doesn't end there. So the other thing you can get is endorsements. You can get an endorsement for each band that you worked. You can get an endorsement for each mode that you work. Well, actually, not each and every mode. And that's kind of been a little controversial for some people. So there are three mode endorsements. There is one for phone modes. That is your single sideband, AM, FM, and um, other modes that carry tele telephony emissions. There is CW, which is Morse code. And Morse code sent by human or computer. It doesn't matter. Then there is digital. Now, digital originally started out as RTTY, radio teletype, which is a specific digital mode using old teleprinters. But later on, it changed to other digital modes. And it was still called an RTTY award. They added on digital modes such as PSK31 and Olivia and other modes like that. You might have heard of some of these. I'll cover these in a future video. And then along came JT65 and FT8. So those are digital modes too. But you know what? Some people kind of got upset because they think that um, these modes are basically going a little too far. They're computers doing ham radio contacts instead of humans. And um, you know what? They might have a point in some respects, but they might, ha they might very well not have a point, you know. I've seen both sides of the issue, and I can see merits on both sides. Anyway, um, so that's the three mode endorsements. Then you have the band endorsements. So you know in amateur radio, we have many different bands. We have all the way down from 2200 meters, all the way down the low portion, the, the very low frequencies, the low frequencies, and um, you have all the way up to the microwaves. So DXCC officially right now has awards from 160 meters, that is 1.8 megahertz, all the way up to 70 centimeters. And I don't think there is really anything beyond that. I have to double check, but so far I don't think anybody's obtained DXCC um, higher than 70 centimeters. Now, as you may realize, as you move on in your amateur radio career, career, like this is work, you will realize that a lot of um, these bands vary in difficulty. And that's no accident. I mean, 160 meters is practically right above the AM broadcast band. It's a very difficult band to get DXCC on. And a lot of people pride themselves in getting DXCC on 160 meters. I obtained my DXCC on 160 and it was not easy because you do require a lot of space for big antennas. It's a very noisy band and it tends to really only work well during the winter months. So I got DXCC on 160 meters. I got it all with CW with Morse code. I did work a few entities afterwards on digital modes, but I wanted to get it all on Morse code. Because that's just my desire. You don't have to do the same. Then, of course, you have band endorsements. I got band endorsements for 80, 40, 20, um, 30 meters, 7, um, 20 meters, 17 meters, 15 meters, 12 meters, and 10 meters. And right now, I'm working on 6 meters. So I have 9 bands total. And I'm going to work on my 10th band. Now, what happens if you work five bands? Well, if you work any five bands, you get a nice, you can get five certificates. But if you work five specific bands, namely 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters, you will get, you will be eligible to get the five band DXCC award. And it comes with a nice plaque. 
that you can put on your wall. You can uh, you can apply for the plaque separately, of course. You can also um, you can also just get a certificate, and that's you know that's fine. It's a little cheaper, but um, yeah, that's uh, DXCC in a nutshell. Um, there is one more award in DXCC that a lot of people um, uh, know about too. That's DXCC Challenge. So I talked about the band endorsements. What the AWRL has done is that they have taken the bands and the, um, the countries, the entities, and they basically count them as what you call entity bands. So if you work, for example, Germany on 20 meters and you work Germany on 40 meters, you get two points for toward your challenge. When you reach 1,000, you will get the challenge um, award and then you can apply for a nice challenge plaque. They look a little different these days, but um, the, you get 1,000 entities and then you work your way up with band entities all the way up to 3,000 and beyond. Now, I'll tell you, getting even to 2,000 is hard. Getting to 3,000 is rarefied air. That is really, you have to be dedicated. You have to hunt down every D expedition. And frankly, it just requires a little bit of luck. And that is the pinnacle of DXCC for many people. If you look at my plaque, you will see that there are several endorsements. There are the medallions on there. And in the middle, there's a trophy at 3,000. So you do get the four medallions when you hit 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. And then you get the, meda the, 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 the cup um, final medallion in the middle. In addition to that, in addition to that, you get a, um, if you are the person with the most confirmed band entity bands at the end of the year, you will get a special um, cup called the Clinton B. DeSoto Cup in honor of Mr. DeSoto. And uh, it'll be, it's very competitive. And if you win it a second year, you also get a medal that you keep. But the trophy is a challenge trophy. So you get the trophy once and then you have to pass it on. So that's, um, that's really interesting. That's the XCC. But it doesn't stop there. So apart from these endorsements, there is the quest for honor roll and there is the country endorsements. So remember I told you about mixed DXCC, it doesn't stop at 100? Well, it goes up in increments up till the, the, the final number of um, DXCC entities, which, are not, which now I think is 340. And if you get within the top 10% of DXers, you will be placed on the honor roll. So how it works is that, um, I think right now it's 331. You work 331, you confirm them, and then you'll automatically be placed on honor roll. Your name gets placed in the magazine, and uh, you get a cool sticker, and you can apply for a plaque. You can do honor roll for mixed, you can also do honor roll for each mode. You have phone, CW, and digital. And you can also do you can also do honor roll on each band. And uh, that's kind of um, although I don't think that you can that you can actually get an honor roll award for each band. It just counts for challenge. So that's uh, the XCC. Oh, there are two more special awards for DXCC. There is mobile DXCC, where you make all your contacts from a moving vehicle. Then there is the satellite DXCC, where you make your contacts via satellites, via amateur satellites. And these don't have any band or moon endorsements. Then you have the QRP DXCC, where you make DXCC using five watts or less. And you basically have to do it on the honor system because nobody's going to come and check your power. But, um, you know, we know hams have honor and they don't, 
we hope they don't cheat. So that's, um, that's basically the XCC in a nutshell. I'm sure there are many things I haven't covered, but um, hey, we'll cover them in future videos. Let's move on to the next award. So let's talk about the Worked All States Award. Worked All States, or WAS, or WAS, or however you want to say it. The Worked All States Award is exactly what it is. You make contact with and confirm contacts with stations in all 50 states of the United States. And while it might not be as popular as DXCC, it's still a very prestigious award and it's coveted by many. And it's also coveted by a lot of radio amateurs who are outside of the United States. You know, when, they, when, when you make contact with them, they'll ask, what is your state? What is your state? Say, oh, my state's New Jersey. They say, thank you. First time I ever make contact with New Jersey. And um, this is why also on your QSL card, you also put your state, right? I put my state prominently so that people know. And I also put my county, which I'll be talking about. Okay, so that is the work to all states, but it doesn't stop there. You can also do band endorsements. You can also do mode endorsements, and there are many more mode endorsements. Guess what? They actually separate, separate out FT8 and FT4 and all these modes on work to all states. And um, there is one really, really nice award in the Worked All States program. That is the triple play. So in the triple play, you make one contact with either, you make, you contact all 50 states with phone, CW, and digital. And then once you have confirmed all 50 states on the three modes, you may apply for the triple play award. You get a numbered certificate. You can apply for a plaque. And the additional challenge is that all contacts must be confirmed with Logbook of the World. So while we're at it, what is Logbook of the World? Logbook of the World is a system for confirming electronically contacts you've made. Remember I showed you QSL cards? Well, Logbook of the World is actually sort of like a, a kind of like QSL card light. It's done electronically. There are no images of cards. You might have heard of another system called EQSL where they actually showed you card images. Those are not valid for AWRL awards. And um, there are several um, steps to get into Log of the World. Some of them involve security and certificates and such like that. And I'll do a future video on how to get onto Logbook of the World. All right, so that is pretty much two popular AWRL awards, the DXCC and the Work All States. What about VHF and UHF? You know, because people make contacts on those two. And sometimes you make contacts on microwaves and you make contacts on other higher bands. Those have awards too. There is the, the VHF UHF Century Club, VUCC. So you know how um, you basically make contact, not with the XCC entities, although you can, but the world is divided up into grid squares. And the grid squares are basically um, part of the Maidenhead system. I'll put a link below. And um, the Maidenhead system, once you've contacted a hundred peak hams in a hundred of those grid squares and you confirm them via QSL cards or logbook of the world, then you can go ahead and apply for the VHF UHF Century Club or VUCC. Now it doesn't end there as well. There you can get endorsements uh, I think right now I'm up to close to 280 grids. I know some people have passed three, 400. And if you work 
all of the grids in the continental United States without using moon bounce, without bouncing your signal off the moon, you will be able to obtain something called the Fred Fish Memorial Award. Now, Fred Fish was a radio amateur who did just that. He worked all of the grid squares in the continental United States without moon bounce. So he is the recipient of Fred Fish Memorial Award number one. And that one, my friends, is very rarefied air too. So that is the ARRL Awards portfolio. In future videos, I will be talking about other awards from other sponsors, such as CQ Magazine, DARC, and also various other little things you can find. There's just too much to put in one video. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I keep stressing how you need to obtain confirmation for these awards. So the cards are one thing, and Logbook of the World is the other thing. It's very easy when you're using Logbook of the World. You can go on the Logbook portal, and you can go and apply for your awards there. But what if you have QSL cards? Well, it's a different procedure. The ARRL has actually had a number of uh, methods to use paper cards. One, you can use the legacy DXCC forms or the other award forms, and you bring your cards with those. The other one is you use something called online DXCC. Now, online DXCC is a system where you enter these in a database, you print, it gets submitted to ARRL, and you print out the form and you bring your cards to get checked. Now, who do you get these checked by? There are two ways to do it. One of them is you go to what you call a card checker. So you might see these people at HamFest who are checking cards at a table and they will be handling these awards. Those are the DXCC card checkers. They're nominated by your ARRL division director or the section manager or the DX clubs that have, um, a, they have a legitimate interest in uh, DXCC. So either of those three methods can appoint a DXCC card checker and they're volunteers and then they basically handle your paperwork, they check your cards and submit it to ARRL. The other method is you can mail your cards to ARRL yourself. I actually did this for my first DXCC award. And um, it was a little risky because some of these were pretty rare cards. Some from like Bouvet Island, which is a very rare island. And um, they've been, they, they, they handled my cards appropriately and send it back safely. So I wasn't too worried. But sometimes, you know, the post office does lose things. So it might be safer to go to a local card checker. And actually, they kind of prefer that you go to a local card checker because that kind of reduces the workload on them. Um, they're pretty busy up there. And the card checkers basically act as a local point of contact. And all they do is they send in the paperwork afterwards. So that's basically how you do it. You know, and you pay your award fees on the forms via credit card or you could pay with a check. Um, and... Um, some of these awards, they actually have fees, but um, the fees are probably not too much. I mean, the plaques are, are kind of, um, you know, the plaques have significant fees only because the plaques cost money to, to process. And you know what? Um, I don't mind paying the fees because the fees go to a good cause because it helps fund the awards program in the ARRL, something that many amateurs actually enjoy. And um, it basically helps also hone their skills because, you know, that's a big part of what amateur radio is about. One, for emergency communications. And two, basically to fulfill the other parts of basis and purpose, which is for us to learn. All right, that's it for this week. And I'll see you next week. You tell me what topic you want to talk about. Maybe I'll talk about more awards. Maybe I'll talk about something else. Until then, 73, this is Rhea, N2RJ. See ya.